in a country with one of the most advanced high-speed rail networks in the world, a passenger train carrying 222 on board is racing along the track. As it approaches a bend, something goes horribly wrong. With so much modern automation and safety systems, what could cause such a shocking derailment to happen? The 24th of July 2013, Santiago de Compostela, Spain. A high-speed train is travelling from the capital Madrid to Ferrol in the northwest of Spain. Making the six and a half hour journey is a Renfei Class 730, a versatile high speed train designed for flexibility. Unlike other trains, which are either diesel or electrically powered, the Class 730 works like a hybrid, able to switch between both electric and diesel, allowing it to transition between Spain's electrified high speed network and older non electrified lines to reach more remote areas of the country. The train set features nine tilting coaches flanked by two electric power cars and two diesel generator units in between. The distinctive shape of its nose has earned it the nickname Petito, meaning duckling in Spanish. Spain's high-speed rail network is one of the most extensive in the world, built to improve connectivity across the country's vast and often mountainous terrain, linking major cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Seville and Valencia with fast, efficient service. The ambitious approach to its implementation reflects Spain's goal of uniting distant regions and modernising its transport infrastructure. It was built and maintained by the state-owned infrastructure company Adif and run by the operator Renfe, also state-owned. As the sun starts to set, the train glides at 195 km per hour through a long stretch of track and through a number of tunnels, coming up ahead is a sharp left-hand bend. Inside the cab, the driver's mobile phone rings. It is the company calling him to discuss the rest of the route. He answers. After talking to the dispatchers, without him noticing it was approaching, the curve all of a sudden comes into view. The driver pulls the emergency brake, trying to slow down. But it is too late, the train careens around the bend, tilting further and further, then derails entirely. Metal screeches as the train strikes a concrete wall, tearing open, while the diesel generators ignite as fuel leaks out from them. It is a scene of utter chaos, smoke, fire, shattered glass, twisted metal and sudden silence. Both locals and emergency services begin to help those who have survived out of the wreckage. Firemen douse the flames from the burning compartments. Journalists and bystanders capture every moment of the aftermath. A video from a trackside camera captures the exact moment of the derailment. Of the 222 on board, 79 lives are lost, and of the 143 survivors, all are injured to varying degrees. Those dead consist of 67 Spanish, 2 French, 2 Italians, 2 Americans, 1 Algerian, 1 Brazilian, 1 Colombian, 1 Dominican, 1 Mexican and 1 Venezuelan. Investigators comb the scene for the train's black box data recorder. Upon examination, they confirm it was travelling too fast. Even after hitting the emergency brakes, it entered the curve at 179 km per hour, or 111 miles per hour. The speed limit, 80 km per hour, or 50 miles per hour, more than double. The phone conversation the driver had with the company lasted around 100 seconds. During this time, the driver was mentally distracted, losing his situational awareness. Though the train's onboard warning system issues audible and visual alerts to reduce speed before the curve, these warnings are not noticed by the driver as he is on the phone. The call ends just seconds before the train enters the curve, at which point the driver realises the excessive speed and initiates emergency braking. But it's too late, the train is still travelling at 195 km per hour, more than double the limit for that section. The unexpected phone call had diverted the driver's attention at a critical moment. But even if the driver fails to manually slow down, an automatic safety feature should perform the action itself. It should be an impossibility to enter the curve at such high speed. 
How could this happen? The high-speed portion of the route leading up to the conventional track is equipped with a modern system called ERTMS, European Rail Traffic Management System. This advanced system monitors train speed and can automatically apply the brakes if a driver fails to respond to speed limits or signals. But a year earlier, the system was encountering an unwanted problem. As the new high-speed track met the older track, the braking system would activate, bringing the trains to a complete stop, causing delays and costing money. So it had been deactivated. Once it was turned off, the train relied solely on a much older system, which only gives warnings, but does not automatically intervene if a train is going too fast. This meant that when the driver became distracted and failed to reduce speed before the curve, there was nothing to stop the train except human action. No emergency braking was triggered automatically, and by the time the driver attempted to slow down manually, it was far too late. Despite the automatic braking system being inoperable, the majority of the blame is still put on the driver, and he is charged with 79 counts of homicide by professional recklessness, and an undetermined number of counts of causing injury by professional recklessness. He admits that he suffered a lapse of concentration, and he approached the curve when the train should have been slowed to 80 km per hour. He, along with other drivers, had complained previously that the bend had often taken them off guard due to its placement just after exiting a tunnel. A safety official is also charged for crimes of homicide and injuries through serious negligence. Both men are sentenced to two and a half years in prison, as well as a professional ban of four and a half years. Renfe's insurer is ordered to pay out over 10 million euros to the injured passengers and families who'd lost loved ones. The accident is the second deadliest involving high-speed rail, after the Escheder derailment in Germany which happened in 1998, and the deadliest rail accident in Spain since 1972. The derailment wasn't caused by a single failure, but by a chain of small decisions, missed safeguards, and lapses in judgment that just happened to align at the worst possible time. It showed how even the most advanced systems can fall short if they are not utilised as intended. Since then, changes have been made, safety systems have been strengthened, speed limits are now more clearly marked, and Spain's rail network continues to evolve, shaped not just by innovation, but by the lessons learned from this very tragedy. If you enjoyed this documentary, then make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future episodes as I upload them. Also, make sure to give this video a like rating for the time and effort I put into making it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.